Welcome back inside Arizona Daily Mix. Coming up in just a minute, we're going to be talking sports bites. I'm not, but we have a special guest, Mason, in the house. He'll be talking sports bites with Brittany. Thanks, Danielle. We're happy to have Mason Kern here today. How are you doing this morning? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Okay, you're welcome. And I'm excited for spring training for the Diamondbacks. But J.D. Martinez, he hit 30 home runs last year for the team. What are they going to do now that he signed with the Boston Red Sox? Yeah, it's definitely a really big loss for the Diamondbacks because he was one of their main power hitters on a really good team last year. I mean, they had 90-plus wins. I mean, in the long run, they did trade with the Yankees to get Steven Souza, a very capable outfielder. So, I mean, while Souza does not fully kind of replace J.D. Martinez, who did go to the Boston Red Sox now, I mean, it's, it's still a step in the right direction for this Diamondbacks team. I think they'll still be really good, make a playoff push, probably be mid-80s, mid to high 80s at the end of the year. Now, is that going to be good enough to win the NL West? I believe so. I mean, if not, then, I mean, obviously the Los Angeles Dodgers, I mean, one of their main opponents. And, and so that's going to kind of be their biggest test mm -hmm. this season. If they can beat them, then, then that'll be a real step forward in terms of maybe a World Series push. I don't think it happens this season, but, I mean, especially with the loss of Martinez, but still a step in the right direction. Yes. Okay, spring training overall, who are you excited to see here in the Valley? Well, I'm from San Diego, so, so the Padres coming to town, is re it's really exciting to kind of see the young prospects for them and, and see where they go, because obviously they've been rebuilding for some time now, so, so see what direction they're kind of heading. It's always exciting. Okay, perfect. I'm a huge Wildcats fan. It's no secret to everyone on the show. I love them through and through. Now, just take us past through the past six days of the Wildcats. It's been a whirlwind. Yeah, I mean, so much has happened with U of A men's basketball. I mean, so so the scandal with Alonzo Trier, first of all, for he got, uh, it was reportedly that he got tested with PEDs. He tested negative. So so he's been suspended two games, but he's coming back now. He was able to play in the Stanford game. So, so that was good for them to have him back. But then in terms of NCAA corruption scandal, Sean Miller might get fired because it's been reported that he reportedly paid DeAndre Ayton, one of their best recruits. No secret that DeAndre Ayton has played so well this season. But it's been reported that they paid him $100,000 to come to the school, which obviously would not be good if that's true. And, and if Sean Miller, if that is true, it, he could lose his job as a result of that. So big scandal going on with U of A right now. We'll see what direction and, and what happens, what consequences fall with the fallout. So y Sean Miller came out yesterday, made a big speech before the game. He was able to coach at the game, which mm -hmm. they eventually won against Stanford. They did. You know, clinching part of the Pac-12 title for mm -hmm. this year. Right now, they're seated eight to go into the bracket. Okay, now do you think that turns around if they can win the Pac-12 championship? Will they move up? Will they stay there? Where are they going to be? I, I think they'll probably stay around there. I, I think they could get as high as six, especially if they do win out in the Pac-12 tournament. Obviously, that would, would be very good for them because they are a very good team with Alonzo Trier, with DeAndre Aiden, with Sean Miller at the helm. I mean, that is a very good roster. But it all comes down to whether or not those guys can play. Because of all these allegations, you never know what direction the NCAA is going to go, if they're going to suspend them or not. But, I mean, if they do win out the Pac-12 tournament, I can see them going as high as six, but they'll probably stay around six to eight. Okay, ASU. Now, bubble team, not bubble team. They got a good win last night over Cal, but Oregon, they looked terrible yeah. last weekend. They're very inconsistent. That's their main problem. I mean, they went 12-0 and 0 to start the year, was as high as number three in the nation, which they hadn't been that high in the year. So they started off really hot. Pac-12 play, they just haven't been the same team. And it's kind of frustrating. They were termed as guard you. You have Shannon Evans, the second. Trey Holder, who's up for the Wooden Award, averaging 18 a game this year. Cody Justice, Remy Martin off the bench. So this team has a lot of firepower. They're very good. Obviously, Cal, not the best team, but it was really good for them to get a 30-plus point win. But those Oregon games, like you said, really rough for them. So, so very inconsistent. I do think they'll make the tournament just based on their key wins. Beat Xavier, who's now number three. Beat Kansas at Kansas. So I think they'll make it but I don't know how far they're really going to get. Okay, real fast, who do you think the Suns will f hire as their next head coach? Well, Jay Triano uh, obviously is the interim right now. I mm -hmm. think they might make a push for David Fisdale, who got bounced from Memphis last season. He could be someone who kind of turns this Suns organization in the right direction. So David Fisdale from Memphis is a really good option, I think. Perfect. Mason Kern, we love having you here. We love you know hearing your radio show on 1060 yeah, NBC, NBC Sports, Sports Radio. Thank you. Appreciate Perfect. it. Perfect. No problem. Danielle.